Today we're going to talk about inequality. First, let's talk about three different kinds of inequality. Picture a bathtub. There's water flowing in through the faucet, there's water building up in the tub, and if you have the drain open, then there's water flowing out as well. Well, if you think of a household, the faucet is like their income, and the drain is like their expenditures, and the water building up in the tub is the household's accumulated wealth. It's their accumulated money, their stocks, their bonds, their property, and their investments. It turns out that each one of these measures of household finances show a different level of inequality. Wealth, the accumulated money in the tub, is the most unequal. In the United States, the top 20% of families own 89% of all the country's wealth. Expenditures are actually the most equal. The top 20% of families make about 38% of all consumption expenditures in the U.S. Income is somewhere in between, but it's still pretty unequal. The top 20% of families earn 59% of all the income in the United States. Income, wealth, and expenditure are all valid ways to think about household well-being. It's just that people who want to minimize inequality tend to talk about expenditure, and people who want to exaggerate inequality tend to talk about wealth. Second, let's look at trends over time. It turns out that over the past 35 years, income inequality has grown pretty dramatically. Between 1979 and today, the top 20% went from earning 42% of all income to 59% of all income, while the share of income going to the remaining 80% actually fell. But that's looking at shares, that's looking at wedges of the pie. Turns out that the pie actually grew over this time period. So what happened to the actual dollar figures that people were earning? Well, after adjusting for inflation, the middle 60% of families saw their incomes go up by 37%. The top 1% saw their incomes go up by 275%, while the poorest 20% saw their incomes rise by 18%. So what's driving these trends? Two things. First, incomes in the top 1% have exploded over the past generation. Part of that is due to sports stars and movie stars, but a lot of it is due to finance and Wall Street and CEO pay. But the rise of the 1% only explains about half of the increase in inequality that we've seen. The other half is caused by the growing gap between people with college degrees and everybody else. In the late 1970s, college graduates earned about 30% more than people with just a high school diploma. Today, college graduates earn 100% more. They earn twice as much. So the other half of the inequality story is that the third of Americans with college degrees are breaking away from the pack in terms of income. So what's causing that? Some economists say that over the past generation, computers have become complements for highly skilled workers, but substitutes for low-skilled workers. Others say that the decline of unions or the rise of foreign competition have hurt low-skilled workers. In any case, inequality is a problem. And it's really complicated, and it's not clear how to solve it. Who is that econ guy? I'm Patrick Walsh. I'm an associate professor of economics at St. Michael's College near Burlington, Vermont. Thank you.